This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1269, A Journey Without a Goal, and Create Structure When You're Floundering, both by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net and I'm your very own personal narrator, Justin Mollick, reading to you from some of the best blogs on the planet with their permission. I have two posts today coming from Leo of Zen Habits, so let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. A Journey Without a Goal by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Nearly every activity we do has a purpose, a goal in mind. We drive to get to work, to the store, to a class or party. We walk for fitness or to get to a specific destination. We work to achieve something, to reach certain numbers. We work out to get healthier, to get a nicer body. But what would happen if we gave up the goal? What would a journey without a goal be like? Imagine setting out for a walk with no particular purpose. You might go in one direction because there's a nice explosion of flowers over there, but then explore a different direction when you see someone playing music. Then go in another direction because you're curious about what's there. No destination in mind, nothing to achieve, just curiosity, fun, and not knowing. What would it be like to work without a goal? You might write something for fun because you wanna get it out of you without knowing what the effect of the writing would be. You would figure out the work as you go without knowing what the finished product will look like. What would it be like to live life without a fixed plan, without knowing where you'll be living in five years or what you'll be doing or what you want to achieve? I don't know the answers, but I do know that I've been freer as I've learned to let go of goals, fixed plans, and fixed destinations. How to flow. I've long been a planner and a goal setter, but I've been learning a different way over the last few years. It's a radical shift in thinking and doing to a freer flowing mode of being. How does it work? Well, to be honest, there's no one way, but it goes a little something like this. You wake up excited about being alive. You wonder, what do I feel like doing today? You aren't constrained to anything at this point, but the question is important. So you get started doing something you're excited about, having fun doing it. Is that thing you're doing a destination, a goal? Well, in some ways, yes, but it's not fixed. There's no set plan and the destination doesn't matter as much as the process, the journey. You start, but you might shift as you go depending on the flow of ideas, on working with others who might have ideas you didn't foresee, on things that happen along the way. You couldn't have predicted these things when you got started, so you have to adapt. No plan can anticipate all of this. No goal would be adequate to the task. You might even completely shift if something new comes up, if a new opportunity presents itself. You let go of your idea of what today was going to be because these ideas of what should be are lightly held. They mean nothing really. And the important thing is the flow. You learn to be flexible instead of set. You learn to be good at change and uncertainty instead of fearing it. As things arise, you adapt and let go of your plans and goals. You move with the flow of water, with the changing landscape. You are free to do this because you don't care where you end up. You just wanna be present in your journey, be compassionate with each step, and have fun each moment along the way. The destination becomes irrelevant. No destination or goal matters if they are all good. Each step along the way then becomes the destination and is exactly where you should be. And I have another post from Leo, but first, I don't know about you, but I've had multiple computers give me the blue screen of death or crash in the middle of an update, and it is the worst. So scary, a terrible feeling, I'm sure you've had it. So I'm a huge fan of automated backups, and Backblaze is a gimmick-free, unlimited cloud backup solution for Macs and PCs for just $6 per month per computer. It's totally worth it. It automatically backs up your documents, music, photos, videos, drawings, projects, everything. You can access all your data anywhere in the world, on the web, or with the mobile apps. And they make it super easy. If you need to restore your files, you can restore just one if you accidentally deleted a single file. It's super quick. Or all of them, and even restore by mail if you have a complete system failure. They'll FedEx you a hard drive or flash drive with all your data on it. So cool. Receive a fully featured 15-day, no-risk, free trial at backblaze.com slash optimal living. Go there, play with it, and start protecting yourself from potential bad times. Start today 
and make sure you visit backblaze.com slash optimal living so they know where you came from and continue to support the show. That's B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E dot com slash optimal living. Create Structure When You're Floundering by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. The best of intentions often flops around without some kind of structure. You might decide you're gonna change your diet and lose some weight, but when mealtime comes around, you just eat the same kind of food and still get too full from eating too much. Or you decide you're going to procrastinate less and be more focused, but then after a short success, you start going to your usual distractions. You start exercising, but then get lazy and fall off the habit. You start waking early, but then have a late night or two and the whole house of cards comes crashing down. We start with great intentions, but the harder ventures cause us to flounder around. Then we repeat that. Start with good intentions, flounder around. Over and over again until we feel hopeless to change anything or start to nourish a deep sense of inadequacy. What can we do to change things? It's not you, it's your method. If your current method of change isn't working, starting with good intentions and then floundering, you have to try a new method. Unfortunately, there isn't just one perfect method, but there is one thing you can do to vastly improve your method, add some kind of structure. How structure improves our method. What do I mean by structure? Anything that keeps you sticking to the course better. Anything that holds you to your intentions. The possibilities are endless, but here are some common examples. One, create rules. No sugar, don't go two days without a workout, no electronics after 9 p.m., meditate first thing upon waking. Two, get accountability. I like having a group of people who I report to every day. A simple way to do that is to use an app like RunKeeper or some kind of diet tracking app where you have friends on the app who will see your log. Another way is to create a Google spreadsheet and use it to track how you did with a goal each day or just email people each week who agree to hold you accountable. Three, set reminders. How will you remember to do what you said you did? This is a huge obstacle, forgetting. Instead of forgetting, set reminders on your phone, on your computer, and little notes all around. Four, do it with others. Find a workout partner, a collaborator on a project, a group class. Doing a project or going through change with others is always an amazing idea. Five, get a coach. I am a big believer in coaching for many reasons, but one of the simplest reasons is that if you have someone you're paying and reporting to, you'll simply be much more likely to follow through. And a coach can see patterns that are getting in your way that you can't see. Number six, create a challenge or game. I've done challenges with my family or friends like push-up challenge, drawing challenge, reading challenge, and also made up games with points and rewards. It creates structure, it makes it fun. Two amazing ways to create change in your life. You can see the idea. What can you do to add structure to your change or goal? You just listened to the post titled, A Journey Without a Goal, and Create Structure When You're Floundering, both by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. That's actually why I started our 30-day challenges at oldpodcast.com. It's in the weekly newsletter, so make sure you're subscribed to that if you wanna participate. You can join for free at oldpodcast.com. That'll do it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another post. So I'll see you there in the Minimalist Monday show where optimal life awaits.